All right, so I finally got Pumpkin Smasher. Now, here's an interesting thing. I've never actually used Pumpkin Smasher before. And I've been playing since... I've been playing since... Ace Awakening and Magma Awakening were new. That's how long I've been playing. I've, that's how long I've been playing. I've been playing since Ice and Magma V2 were still new. So... I think that was probably like two years ago or something, but you've never gotten Pumpkin Smasher before. But we'll go ahead and start. So number one, uh, Pumpkin Smasher has a unique M1. You just do like a little smash on the ground. That's really it. It does more damage than the other M1s previous to it. I'm not using any accessories or passives to get the true damage of this. It is upgraded and it has 12% more damage at the moment. It's the worst M1s ever. The only reason it's decent is because of the last hit on the actual M1. If it wasn't for that, it would be a pretty mid M1. This is kind of, eh. Then we have Hammer Spins. This is probably the best move it has. So you deal a pretty decent amount of damage. And if you're using this in PvP, you were killing the enemy's dodges. But only issue with this is that it doesn't really have a lot of range. It just kind of comes with the range department. But I definitely see some use for it in PvP for sure. PvE, not very much. I don't think it covers enough distance to really gather enough enemies. So pretty decent, pretty decent. And next we have Solid Break. Now Solid Break is it's pretty interesting because if you manage to hit it, you can unlock the enemy. Like, you can literally look in any direction and they can't get out. For how long the move lasts, I think it does a too little damage. You're putting yourself at risk. You're very open. And I think enemies can also, NPC specifically, can still use attacks on you, which is like... That's pretty bad. That's actually really, really bad. This is more of a PvP weapon. I see its potential in PvP. I, I think the Solid Break has a decent AoE when it comes to dragging in enemies. And you can combo out of it with Hammer Spins, but it's just an overall okay weapon. Now, this weapon does have another unique mechanic besides a special M1. So you have a little, you have a rare chance of summoning, I don't want to, uh, what, the Headless Horseman or whatever. I think it has a higher chance of proccing on more enemies, which I think I'll try instead. I didn't think about this before, but I think all the times that I did this, I had the pumpkin head on. I think that's what the issue is. Wait, hold on. Let me see. You do need the pumpkin head. I didn't know that. You need the pumpkin head to, for this to work, but I mean, the pumpkin head's actually a pretty good accessory. 16% to all damage and you reduce all damage by 16%. This is one of the best accessories that I've ever used, but... But if you use the pumpkin head, which is a good accessory, so that's not an issue, uh, you actually have a pretty decent proc chance of summoning the Mr. Pumpkin Head here. And he adds a decent amount of extra damage. So if you're using pumpkin head, which is actually pretty feasible, because I mean, this is actually a good accessory. This is actually a good accessory. Like, it, it's good. 16% to all damage. Reduce all damage by 20%. That's on the same level as uh, Nightcap. And you're getting more damage to sword and fruit and your melee. So that definitely makes it more reliable. If it was a trash accessory, I think it would have been not worth it. But it's actually a decent accessory. And he summons, he gets summoned, I guess, kind of often enough to be useful. But he adds a decent amount of extra damage. Nothing too crazy, but he adds a little bit to it. So with all that taken into account, I'm going to give Pumpkin Smasher, give it a B.